500th birthday is pretty hard to imagine because, you know, people think about that and they say, gee, that's, they get depressed. It's just living 500 years. Life's going to be boring. And they think about what they do every day and do that for 500 years. That's not what we're talking about. We'll be funnier. We'll be sexier. We'll be able to have different virtual bodies and virtual reality environments that are not toy-like, that are really realistic. Uh, we're going to greatly expand who we are, and, and that's within 50 years. Ray Kurzweil is a pioneer in the field of artificial intelligence. He's an award-winning scientist and engineer, a millionaire several times over because of his invention. Son aura, Kurzweil la doit à une affirmation. Selon lui, l'histoire de l'humanité va basculer pour de bon en 2045. Il a même donné un nom à cet épisode terrestre, la singularité. Paru en 2005, Singularity is Near, dans lequel il précise sa prophétie, se hisse dans le top 15 des livres les plus vendus aux États-Unis. We go out to 2045, according to my calculations, we will have expanded our intelligence a billion fold by merging with this artificial intelligence we're creating. That's such a profound, singular change in human history that we borrow this metaphor from physics and call it the singularity. En physique, la singularité est le nom donné à un événement aux conséquences imprévisibles. Le Big Bang en fait partie. Pour Ray Kurzweil, la singularité est la prochaine grande rupture dans l'histoire de l'humanité, comme l'ont été la domestication du feu pendant la préhistoire ou encore l'invention de la roue 3500 ans avant Jésus-Christ. Avec l'avènement de l'ordinateur, l'homme se précipite vers un nouveau Big Bang programmé pour éclater selon Ray en 2045. First of all, would you tell the folks your name? My name is Raymond Kurzweil, and I'm from Queens, New York. Queens, New York. Uh, and before we show the audience what his uh, secret is, uh, we have just a few seconds for Raymond to play this piece of music. Raymond, the piano's all yours. Thank Raymond's secret concerns something that he did. Was that thing written by a computer? Ah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I built a computer, and uh, by feeding in certain relationships and music, I was able to write music with it. I predict a great future for you. We were very yeah. pleased to have you with us tonight. Congratulations. Thank you. Ray Kurzweil, né en 1948 à New York, où ses parents, deux artistes juifs autrichiens, se sont réfugiés avant la guerre. Précoce, il écrit son premier programme informatique à 15 ans et construit son premier ordinateur à 17. Diplômé en informatique du prestigieux institut de technologie du Massachusetts, il met au point le premier scanner à plat. Il invente le Kurt Weill, le premier clavier capable de reproduire des instruments acoustiques, devenu une référence dans le monde de la musique. Mais c'est en 1976 qu'il devient célèbre, grâce au succès de la Kurt Weill Reading Machine, un ordinateur capable de lire un texte à voix haute. Une révolution pour les non-voyants, adoubée par des méga-stars comme Stevie Wonder ou Red Charles. The user can take an active role in his reading. He can back up your line over again. He can go word by word. He can have words spelled out. It actually started in 75, when there was this thing on the news about this man who had come up with a way that would enable a blind person to be able to read. And I said, this is crazy, this is impossible, I gotta meet this person. À la tête de l'Empire Kurzweil Technologies, Ray devient un homme influent. Décoré par trois présidents américains, nommé 19 fois docteur honoris causa, il est décrit par le fondateur de Microsoft Bill Gates comme le meilleur futurologue de son époque. Il a même prédit et daté la chute de l'URSS puis l'avènement d'Internet. In the early 80s, I, I saw this worldwide web of communication connecting hundreds of millions of people emerging in the late 1990s. I wrote about that in the 80s. 
People thought that was crazy, uh, but that's exactly what happened. When I see people look at these ideas and think they're very strange, I think of myself. When I first started 30 years ago and looked at the implications of the, these ideas, and it took me a while, not just to get my intellectual arms around them, but my emotional arms. Derrière chaque génie, un traumatisme. Si Kurtweil regarde sans cesse vers le futur, c'est pour conjurer le sort. Ray a 22 ans quand son père, chef d'orchestre et compositeur, est terrassé par une crise cardiaque. Depuis, il n'a qu'une idée en tête, le ramener parmi les vivants. Pour cette raison, il conserve dans son garage tous les documents amassés par son père durant son existence. All of his records and love letters to my mother and uh, recordings of music and scores and movies and photographs. And so that represents a lot of information about him. And artificial intelligence can take all that in, can go through my brain, and pull out my memories, uh, you find his DNA in his gravesite. Uh, we could actually bring back a much better replica of my father at 58, which is when he died. So that's the idea. I actually think this will be a popular thing to do. I've talked to people about it, and people even who are not into these ideas, but who really deeply miss someone, uh, like my wife, talking about her father, say, yeah, she'd really like to do this, uh, be able to talk to her father again. Well, you're still living forever. <laughs> that's well, not just a salutation in her family. <laughs> En attendant de se faire uploader dans un ordinateur, Ray Kurzweil essaie déjà de vivre le plus longtemps qu'il peut. Son credo, la reprogrammation, comme on redémarre un ordinateur. Il a mis au point une quantité faramineuse de vitamines, antioxydants et autres molécules qu'il ingurgite à raison de 200 pilules par jour. Quand il cassera sa pipe, il se fera ainsi cryogéniser, dans le meilleur état possible, jusqu'à ce qu'on ait trouvé le moyen de le ramener à la vie. I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, which my father had, um, and I've overcome that. I've had no indication of type 2 diabetes for about 25 years. Um, and I'm in very good health today. I have no, no significant issues. My, my big toe uh, has, is a little stiff, uh, but I'm actually in very good shape. We are the species that transcends the natural order. We go beyond the natural order. We didn't stay in the ground. We didn't stay in the planet. We have not stayed with the limits of our biology. Uh, no other animal does this. That's what's unique about humans. We transcend, we overcome these problems. We're not just peaches on the tree. <laughs>